Alrighty, good to see you. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about a quick turnaround Tuesday trading recap. So I'm gonna be talking about the stocks that I trade real quick. It was a good green day. So I'm just gonna, I traded a lot of tech stocks and the turnaround Tuesday definitely happened because a lot of stocks reversed very strongly. So let's get right into the trades. My first trade of the day was on Facebook and it was actually a Facebook short trade. I rarely short stocks, but this is a pretty easy, easy setup. If we, you know, I, if I'm showing the trades, you know, look at the hour to hourly time frame on Facebook over here. We had a nice good drop yesterday, and then we put in a bear flag. Well, once we're starting to break that bear flag to the downside, first thing in the morning, there's usually an opening flush, and a lot of stop orders are going to trigger, and the stock is likely to drop. So, first thing this morning, after about you know the third minute of the day, Facebook started to break this 301 support. You know, from that bear flag yesterday, you know, there's an important support level yesterday. Once we started to flush on good volume, boom, I go ahead and go short Facebook minus 73 shares. Um, covered into that low, covered at the low, 299, almost covered the exact low wick, uh, and then covered a little bit more. And then I uh, reshorted just a little bit, 31 shares, reshorted again, and then took some profits down there at the 299.50s, and then stopped out of the last piece uh, for basically break even as Facebook started to pull up. So, Facebook, good, fun little short trade in the morning. Tried uh, another little short trade, but then eventually got stopped out over 301 right at the highs. That's okay. That was a small little short trade. And later, I actually shorted uh, Facebook again. We started to get really parabolic, and then we started to come down. I was just taking a small little short trade. Net, net, Facebook, plus $69. Perfect uh, P&L for 420. It was really fun uh, trading Facebook short, especially since I don't short very often. But I'm actually really liking it. You know, stocks drop really fast and they actually tend to have some follow through when it's to the downside, at least in this late uh, market environment and where the SPY and the Qs are positioned. So that was the first trade of the day. Facebook short times two. Let's talk about SQ. SQ I had a nice good trade off of this morning. You know, we had the nice good dip and rip. So, you know, we dip down, we dip and we start to rip. So boom, I'm buying SQ, you know, at the 248, 249 peel some profits off, peel some profits off, hold some of my shares because I'm expecting a higher low. We get that higher low. This is a much better setup over here. You know, buying SQ over here and then buying again, taking profits, taking profits, and then uh, take some more profits off as uh, SQ starts to peel in through these highs or does a false breakout. You know, there's, there's a bull flag that was a false breakout and that marked the high of the day. Watch out for false breakouts a lot in this market. False breakouts are um, tending to reveal the high of the day. But the thing about SQ is SQ is actually a loser for me today, mostly because I tried to buy the dip again over here. You know, I tried to buy the dip again and eventually SQ started to flush and I had to stop out of my uh, debit spreads. I had to stop out of my put uh, credit spreads that I was selling. So I wanted to get really good size on SQ. If we look at the, you know, the higher time frame chart of SQ, I really felt that 245 should have been a really good dip buy. And, you know, we're, we're hanging out. We're just about to break above yesterday's high. And then we can test something like 255. That was my first target was 255 and then 259, 260. But SQ just decided to not have follow through, made a low, lower high, and then just kind of bleeding off into the after hours. So SQ, kind of a dud. I gave it the chance. I could have taken a lot of money on SQ. I could have taken, you know, plus $250. Instead, I let the last two thirds stop out near the lows because SQ is starting to really sell off, you know, underneath 246. So I had to stop out of SQ underneath 246 and it was just unfortunate to have to, you know, take that L on it. But I gave it the chance, had the SQ gone to that 255 and 260, boom, we're looking at about, you know, $700, $800 P&L instead of just minus 72 overall. So that was uh, SQ. Let's talk about... Uh, the worst trades, Apple, Apple and Neo, Apple over here. Apple had a nice good false breakout this morning. You know, we had a good move up. I buy, I buy the dip on this wick, but then I had to stop out underneath the lows. Apple starts to pinch a little bit. I go long Apple over here over 134.60. Peel some profits off at 135.50, but I was looking for a little bit more. I was looking for 136, at least just a tap of 136. And unfortunately, Apple had to break down. I stopped out of Apple right underneath 134.80. And I'm so glad I did. I mean, actually, it'll be easier if I just showed my trades. Show trades. Uh, you know, go up over here. So yeah, nice good, nice good PL day, almost $200. But at Apple, right over here, you know, higher buying up here, buying up here, selling up there. 
But then we start, I have to sell a little bit more as we start to break support. I have to sell a little bit more as we start to break support. Eventually, I was able to catch some really good dip buys right here. You know, buying the dip right there, selling right there, buying the dip right here, selling right there, selling right there. Nice good move on Apple later in the day. Much cleaner price action. That was a much smoother. Those are ones where you can just trail your stop. That just hit from trailing my stop. Uh, that, that, those are the moves that I'm looking for when I'm trading. Clean upside moves. And it really only gets clean once the volatility and volume starts to really spike. Versus in the morning, it's really choppy. It's back and forth. Everybody's kind of undecided where they want to take Apple. So that was Apple. At least a few covered calls was able to dampen it. Minus $31 on Apple. Let's go over to Neo based on the false breakout. So Apple did a false breakout. Neo did a false breakout. I really loaded up on Neo, you know, buying in at 37.60, looking for a move up to 38. 38, just at least. I don't I didn't expect it to break yesterday's high and only go 30 cents, but it broke yesterday's high, only went about 30 cents. Same thing. Gave up the entire move. Same thing. Gave up the entire move. That's usually rare. Most of the time, if the first day they give up the entire move, the second time they usually flag a little bit and then continue on up. So Neo was a stop out because I was anticipating that flag and unfortunately it just had to stop me out. You know, at least a, a covered call is able to dampen it a bit. Minus $57 on Neo. Those are my two biggest expense trades. Let's talk about Tesla. I did a, tes a few Tesla longs today. You know, longing Tesla, selling Tesla at 7.30. Nice good bull move. I set at about 7.37. We could see a little bit more at 7.37. That's the resistance from where Tesla broke down from. So it's going to be an excellent shorting opportunity today. Too bad I didn't short Tesla earlier. That would have been really nice. But as you can see, a few break-even trades right here. Break-even, um, break-even down here. So Tesla, net-net. At least we're able to chug away with about 100 bucks on Netflix. That 737 short would have been the best trade though. 737 all the way down to, you know, 712, 7, 711. That's almost 20 points on Tesla catching from that 737 high. If you can go back and rewind the stream. And I was saying 737 looks like a really good short. And people were like, isn't Tesla bullish though? I was like, yes, it is bullish, but it's at a strong resistance. And look at the higher time frame. It's very likely to reject from there. Tesla did end up rejecting from that 737 resistance. So that was Netflix. Let's talk about our, that was uh, Tesla. Let's talk about Netflix. Netflix had earnings today. First move of the of the day, I wanted to actually, um, I wanted to buy this breakout, bought that breakout, ex expecting uh, uh, Netflix to break through that initial morning high. It didn't, that's fine. That's a, that's a normal short setup. I'm aware of the short setup. Short sellers are selling up there and they're putting their stop loss above this wick, this high wick, and they're getting away with it. They actually could have shorted it and then they Netflix dropped all day. So that's okay, I'm gonna buy right there and I'm gonna quick stop out once it shows to me that, hey, we're moving lower. We don't want to actually go higher. And so that's fine. Minus the, that first stop I was for minus $22, but I was able to end green on Netflix today. I was looking at the expected move of Netflix, it was about $40. So Netflix closed the day at about 540. So I know if we start getting underneath 500, I know that that should be a good snapback rally because Netflix isn't gonna, just gonna drop $50. Now it can, or $60 or $70, it actually did though, but it, it, Netflix is not gonna drop to 400. It's very unlikely. And so because it's unlikely, I'm gonna take that trade, buying the dip on Netflix at 490. Tried to get some out in the, in the 500s, but this is a fast wick. And I was able to get uh, those five shares out for eight points, eight points on that uh, scalp trade, just five shares, so small size, you know, $2,500, but um, that's, you know, a good, nice, good, good $40 scalp trade for, you know, 30 seconds of work. Not gonna complain. Netflix, look for Netflix to potentially head lower. Netflix does not, well, Netflix, based on the expected move, is actually likely to step back to the mean. Netflix, based off the technical chart, looks like it wants to head lower. So Netflix, watch out for some resistance at like 505 or something like that. That's going to be the upper resistance target for Netflix. Otherwise, Netflix is likely to continue to drop. So the medium wins, medium losses. Um, at least it's a better P&L day than um, yesterday. Yesterday was minus 150 today, around 200. Nice, good green day. Choppy. Could have been much better had I locked it all in, but I want to leave it so that I can snowball those winners. And that's where I have big breakouts in my accounts. 
I can have a few, like two or three thousand dollar green days. And in between just minus a hundred dollars, minus $200 plus a hundred dollars plus $200. So I cut my account consolidates and then I allow my account to break out to the upside. I never want to allow my account to break to the downside, although it can tend to happen, especially if you um, start losing your, your rules and your trading plan. So nice, good uh, green Tuesday. Let's get ready for Friday. Hit the like, comment, and subscribe. See ya.